Horrorverse. My name is Cody Hawk, and today we're going to be talking about the third installment in the Hatchet series. Um, came out in 2013. This one is now have a it has a new director, B.J. McDonnell, I believe was his name. Um, Adam Green is no longer the director, but he is the writer, and the producer. I do believe for this movie, um, there there are only two um, recurring characters in this movie. It's from the last one that is Neil Harris and Kane Hodder returning as Kane Hodder is always returning as um, Hatchet or Victor Crowley and then Danielle Harris is returning as Mary Beth. Um, so I mean I guess talking about the series it is kind of a spoiler on that matter that um, Mary Beth, the character in the movie played by Danielle Harris and played by a different actor in the first one is the only person that lives through all these movies so far. Like she's made it in one, two, and three but in two they switched to Danielle Harris which I personally like it a little bit better, so that's awesome. Um, we do have a couple horror cameos in this movie, though. We have Sid Haig um, as a like redneck hillbilly racist. He's only in the movie for maybe five minutes, but he was hilarious in this movie. In this movie, for that little few minutes of scenes, um, and then also Derek Myers or Mears, I don't know how you say it. Um, he is a SWAT team leader in this movie, and he's. Very well known for here recently Swamp Thing, the DV, DV, the DC streaming service um, TV show Swamp Thing. He is Swamp Thing in that movie or in that show. Um, he was also Mike, not Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th remake, and he played a predator in I think it was Predators. I believe the one with um, I can't think of it now. I just went blank on the name, but it's. One of my favorites, honestly, if it's the one I'm thinking it is. Um, so, so a couple horror cameos in there. Now, this one, like I said in the previous uh, Hatchet 2 review, starts directly from where the second one ended. Like, I mean, it's shot for shot, pretty much, which is pretty impressive considering there's you know a three-year gap in between these movies. Um, so, it picks right up from that. Like I said, I'm not going to go into really spoilers unless. I just have to, like I said, with Daniel Harris recurring, I feel like, you know, most people are going to realize that her character lives. Um, but so this one, it starts with her going to the police station with a shotgun, with Victor Crowley's head in her hand after she killed him in two, which she really didn't. Spoiler, I guess, there. I don't know. Um, and they arrest her. Um, so, you know, she tries telling him her side of the story that it's Victor Crowley, you know. Of course, no one believes her because it just sounds crazy. Um, so the police station and all the cops in, or most of the cops in it, go and um, search the swamps to find all these bodies. She says there. She says is there. And of course, Victor Crowley is still alive. So you know, and then so then at this point, it just kind of becomes like all the other two, you know, bunch of random people in the swamp getting brutally murdered by Hatchet or. Victor Crowley. I don't think they ever actually call him Hatchet. I think they call him Hatchet Face in these movies. I don't think they call him Hatchet. Um, but a lot of times they just call him Victor Crowley. So once you get to that point where they're all in the swamp, it's kind of just your copy and paste from the other ones. A couple different types of kills, stuff like that, but for most, most parts the same. Um, and this one, it really sucks for the series, but it kind of goes, gets worse and worse for me as we move along through the series. Um, this one's kind of the same as two, just a, a little bit worse. Like the same complaints I had for two, I have for this one. Um, they really try to make this really complicated sto backstory with Victor Crowley. And I mean, I guess I can, it might spoil a little bit, but I mean, it'll make sense, I guess, if I say it. So Daniel, Daniel Harris's character, Mary Beth, her dad, her uncle, and one more person, or another person in this movie. They were the kids in the original, it shows the flashback, setting Victor Crowley's house on fire and killing her, causing his dad to kill him. So, um, in this one, there's none of those people are alive now. Her dad's dead. Um, the guy that I was saying is in this one, because I was thinking of something about two. Um, he died in two, the other, the other person that caused the fire, and her uncle is dead. So, and so they try to make this thing now where Mary Beth is the only person alive in the world that can stop Victor Crowley at this point. 
and they have this weird exchange where they've figured out that if she finds his dad's ashes, hands them to him, he'll die. Like that that's what he's doing this whole time is looking for his father and if he finds him, whether he's alive or dead, his spirit will go away and he'll be at rest or whatever. I think it sounds like complete bullshit. Um, but that's the story they're going with. I don't like it. I completely hate it, honestly. It's very dumb. Um, I mean, I feel like they really didn't, like, and that's the thing, they don't need that. Because that's what happened with Friday the 13th, in my opinion, as you go from the originals, where it's just kind of very, you know, small, basic story. You know, Jason drowning as a kid, and you know, all that stuff. And then as they progress, they add more and more story to it, and in my opinion, that's when it starts to get dumber. That's when it starts to get worse because these Muppet movies don't need a story, in my opinion. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, if if they're able to do a very interesting story, yeah, I'm, that's fine. But a lot of these movies, the stories aren't that great. They're kind of half-ass, you know, just enough to have a story in it. And at that point, just don't worry about it. Just do a very basic story, kind of like how this one, how Hatchet 1 was. There's a little bit of backstory so you know who Victor Crowley was, but besides that, it doesn't matter. Instead, you know, they're doing this half-assed big story. You don't care about any of it. You don't care. The only people you even like in this movie, really, is Daniel Harris. Um, the rest of people, you don't care if they die, and that's fine. I mean, that's what these kind of movies are. They don't build back, you know, stories for these characters because they're all going to die. And that's fine with me. It's just don't try <laughs> to make a story out of nothing. And that's my biggest complaint with this one. And like I said, it's the same as two. It's the same thing I said in 2, it's just they've added on, they've had that story, now they've put something new on top of that story, and it just keeps going and going, and it's so ridiculous. Um, but besides that, you know, like I said, I mean, like I've said in all the other ones, the practical effects are great, so the kills are great, so the um, costume and makeup design for Victor Crowley is great, um, you know, Kane Hodder's great, Daniel Harris, you know, good. Um, I said Sid Haig's in it for a second, I mean... He's hilarious in that, even for those few minutes. Um, and then Derek Myers is in it. He's kind of an asshole, but just him, his character, you know, is the SWAT leader is just kind of a dick and you don't care. But it's cool that they added him in here just because, you know, he's another horror icon, in my opinion, that's played some really great monsters. Um, so besides all that, I mean, that's, that's really all I can say about it. I mean, it's, it's the same as two just more story that's not necessary so you know I've recommended all these and but honestly I don't know if I could recommend three um, I mean if you want to I mean if I guess if you like two and don't really have the problem the problems I have with it three would be fine you know you would probably enjoy three it's just me I didn't like it the story was dumb I don't, that pisses me off um, so after this one, there's only one more, which is um, Victor Crowley, and I have to check. I keep meaning to. I think I reviewed that one already, but I don't remember, so I have to check that out. Um, that one's actually one I really enjoy, so I will have you know. So there's a lot I can say about that one. Um, but as far as this one, I believe um, Hatchet Two. I did a C, or no, a C minus. Um, and like I said, this one I'm just not a big fan of. Um, you know, when there are kills, it's really cool. Um, but a lot of these kills you actually don't even see on camera. There's only a couple that you actually see. Um, so this one, in my opinion, is far worse than one or two. Um, so I think for Hatchet 3, I'm going to have to give a D-. minus. Um, like I said, I mean, it's, it's still watchable if you just want to see the kills. It's just, there's not as many in this one. That's another thing that sucks. I mean, there's a lot. But there's not as many... Um, that you see on screen, a lot of them's off screen, you know, he's grabbing someone, you don't see what happens, or you just see some blood splatter. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The next one should be Victor Crowley. I'm going to try to do that one before we leave for um, Halloween Horror Nights. Um, if not, that might be the next video you see. I'm not sure yet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll see you on the next one.